as we have been telling you, this week Japan marked the 68th anniversary of the bombing in Hiroshima. A little history for our younger viewers. The, the atomic bombings of Hiroshima on August 6th and Nagasaki on August 9th were conducted by the U.S. in the final stages of World War II in 1945. The two events are the only use of nuclear weapons in war to date, and we hope the last. Here is the latest news from Japan. Hiroshima's peace bell marks the 68th year of the city's entry into history for the most horrific of reasons. Its residents observe a minute's silence at the exact time the atomic bomb fell in the closing days of World War II. By the end of 1945, an estimated 140,000, more than a third of the population, lost their lives. Many died in the blast, more afterwards from radiation exposure. Three days later, the United States dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki. Six days after that, Japan surrendered. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, like many of his predecessors, spoke of Japan's duty to press for a world free of nuclear weapons. We Japanese are history's sole victims of the nuclear attack, and we have a certain responsibility to bring about a world without nukes. It's our duty to continue to remind the world of our inhumanity. But his words were criticized by the mayor of Hiroshima, Kazumi Matsui, whose own father survived the bombing. While the talks Japan is having with India on acquiring nuclear technology and equipment may be good for the economic relationship between the two nations, it can only be an obstacle to ending nuclear proliferation. This year's memorial comes at a time when Japan is pushing to sell its nuclear technology abroad, despite opposition. It also comes at a time when efforts to contain the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami are not going well. The company which operates the plant says radioactive groundwater is rising beyond its control. It's just amazing to see so many of those uh, people still still mourning that, that horrific day in history. Okay. And I want to just talk about the psychology of how a, a country overcomes such a devastating event such as this. I mean, here in the U.S., we still are talking, obviously, not so long ago, 9-11. But this, is an, this was a series of events and bombings that claimed about a quarter of a million lives. Right. I mean, how, how do you... I don't, I don't think... I think this is one of those incidents where you never get past it. This is something you never put in your rearview mirror if you're Japanese. But I also think it's, it's uh, for the world, it's something that we don't really put in our rearview mirror. And, and, and I think that my question as a psychologist is really, does nuclear, nuclear warfare and people, do they really relate? I mean, can you really have nuclear bombs and people? given the fact that we have so many unstable individuals out there, and obviously the leaders of some of the countries that, that we know very well are questionable, uh, and their, their personalities and, and their, their thinking and their thought process is such a, so, so, so bizarre in, in, my, in my view. And then they have nuclear bombs? I mean, it's just, that whole concept to me is I want to get to that in just a minute, but I want to just talk about the, the survivors of Hiroshima. Uh, they're called Hibakusha and they are just amazing people. They are now called to abolish all nuclear weapons right now. A reality or not, Didi? I don't see how. I mean, you know, what, if we're gonna go backwards, we, do you think every country in the world they're gonna get rid of their nukes? Not gonna happen. I don't want us to get rid of our nukes because then we're at a disadvantage. So, you know, and going back also to the history of this, Remember, I don't mean to be crass, but remember, Japan started it. <laughs> so they bombed Pearl Harbor, which is how this all started. And those bombs are very sad and very upsetting. But they did save lives in the end because it ended the war. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. In, in this particular with, yeah. instance, though, I mean, we saw the death of so many civilians. Yeah. I mean, that was just, you know, that was just horrific. I mean, and you're talking about 250,000 people. Um, and, and now, you know, Japan, it's amazing that we are allies. It is, to me, it hasn't been that long. It's been 68 years, and, and we, we certainly could learn a lot from, from Japan in terms of how, you, how to mend relations with other countries. And we were actually allies, you know, only so many years after the bombing, yeah. if you really think about it. You know, it's not only today. So, so I think, you know, re relations between countries can, can heal, but uh, to Didi's point, I think that we're past this on a psychological sense. There's a tipping point that we're past 
and I don't see uh, countries giving up their nuclear weapons because they're fearful of the other guy. So I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. Well, let's just talk about how many nuclear weapons are around the world. There's 17,000. Uh, now the U.S. has, of course, opened up the dialogue about about uh, not having as many, but there, are, of course, you mentioned several countries. But let's name them: Russia, North Korea, and Iran. And uh, those seems to be the three that are moving forward at a faster pace to get more nuclear weapons. Right. And and if you if you look at North Korea you have a family who, that's been in charge of this country for a long time and it's an unstable family I mean you have people in this family that are uh, could be diagnosed if you will by a psychologist or a psychiatrist as being actually mentally disturbed well the um, reason you know, we have we you know as a superpower in the United States we're a superpower and these other countries it's peace through strength because they know what can happen I don't think that's a bad thing I'm with Ronald Reagan on this because you know if we have the capability they're going to be like, well, maybe we'll back off. And that's what that's how it works. It just is. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if, if we could stop nukes, but it's just not going to happen. But what's scary is when it gets into the hands, to what you said, of countries that who knows what they'll do because they have nothing to lose. But should the U.S. Um, and learn also from Japan be an example to the rest of the world on reducing nuclear power? I don't think so. I, I, I really think that we're past certain points, and I, I, I think to Didi's point, I don't think it's only Ronald Reagan now. I think everybody, Democrats, uh, independents, I think all folks realize here in this country that we need to be strong and we need to be fearful of, of that other person who's unstable. Well, let's just talk about not nuclear weapons, but nuclear power. And that scares a lot of folks. And we can just look at, at the power plant that is still leaking into the ocean right now. A lot of people are saying, I don't even want the nuclear energy right now. Well, Japan has a hard way to go. Because well, yeah. I, and I think the reason for this, for one, they're on an island. So it's difficult. Energy is an issue anyway. Secondly, you know, they have a lot of earthquakes. So it's just tough for them. So, I, you know, and they've had more trouble than I think almost any country and any people uh, with nukes, and, or excuse me, with nuclear power and with the leakage. And, and, and they had so many people in a small area that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think they really need to, in, in some ways, try to get it under control a little better. But I think it's the earthquakes. That's a big part of it. Well, even if you live close to one, and I lived up in Stanford, and, of course, there's uh, that, right. that big nuclear uh, power plant right there. Um, and they would tell us, uh, well, you can take an iodine tablet. <laughs> yeah, right. You, there, you say, really? I, I, I don't now. think that if there's ever a problem. And, of course, that would absorb any kind of radioactive uh, material in your body. But, you know, no nobody way. really that believed work. that. And, and, of course, there's a great fear right. to having it there. So, I mean, I, the psychology of overcoming a fear like that, I, I, don't, I don't see how people, you know, yeah if you have countries like Germany who are moving forward at a very steady rate to get rid of nuclear energy. Well, you have, you have countries like, I think, like France, though, that has, I guess, a, a huge percentage of their electrical supply is, is from atomic energy. So, you know, is it, is it good for us? Does it really work? Uh, I, I kind of believe that Albert Einstein had the right thought of this many years ago when he was talking about, is this type of nuclear power really something for human beings and that's a question mark and I think that question is still out there I still have a problem with I don't it. think we're going to go backwards on nuclear power just like no. the nukes and the with, with so many other renewable energy sources like solar and, and wind I mean shouldn't we be looking at more alternatives uh, I mean I know it's costly so well, I, mean, I know it's costly but as we look at Japan and and the tragedy we, there we should uh, actually we, we need to go in that direction but I, I, I think that uh, to Didi's point, we're there with atomic energy to a certain extent, and I don't think we're going to go backwards and eliminate it entirely, and we're certainly not going to eliminate uh, weapons. We're just not going to do it because of the psychology of the day. In our country, we haven't had an incident for a very, very long time, which is good, so I think we've got it under control. We're going back to Japan. I don't know what they're doing wrong. I don't know what the issue is, but, I mean, they seem to have more trouble than, than, than almost anyone. So, I don't know, perhaps they could uh, take a look at what we're doing because right. we've got it under control. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, money over lives right now. Uh, with all the energy companies, they make more money over nuclear power. So I'm going to still go on that question right now and say, shouldn't they be really pressing forward here in the U.S.? I mean, it's, they're making more profit. I, I think that we should be pressing more to the alternative energy sources. Do I think we're going to get there? I do. I actually think that in the future, we're, we're going to be going down that road and it's going to be pretty successful. And we're actually going to be uh, heating our homes and air conditioning our homes with 
you know, in, in a different way, maybe with sun power, or whatever. But but that's a lot of time and, and a lot of energy by on our own to, to get there. All right, quick question, a personal question: Would you be willing to spend more money for a, a safer, cleaner source of energy? Well, I think it is a clean source of energy. I think nuclear power is good. I mean, but if you're talking about solar and wind, uh, not really. Okay. That's what I think uh, right now we don't have the money to do that. Okay. Well, I think I think solar is going to work actually, and I think I think it's working in certain countries right now, and I I would pay a reasonable amount more to to, to get there. All right, but on your own personal. Yeah, I, no. I would. Yeah. No. no? Okay. Not doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about. I mean, you know, we've been watching, you know, the the power plant, the the Fukushima power plant, and all that. I mean, the, the stories from over there of, of this once thriving body of water, there's no boats there, there's no fishing. It's just, it's just a disaster, a, tr a true nuclear disaster. H how do these folks in Japan start to heal? I mean, it's only been two years, but as a psychologist, Dr. Burr, where do they go from here? Well, you know, we talk about cognitive behavioral therapy all the time, you know, and I think what the Japanese need to do is to, is to develop uh, a different strategy in the way they think about uh, their nuclear power system, either they're going to have it and it's going to be more effective or they're going to not have it and they're going to go down a different pathway towards these other alternative mess, uh, you know, approaches. But they need to change perhaps their expectation levels also about what they, what they want and how they want to get their electrical power. You know, they, they, need, they need to think about this uh, more but qualitatively. A lot of the pu public in Japan, they are um, not only pushing for this, but they're protesting for it. So they, they, in Japan, they clearly want this. Well, that's understandable. I mean, they've had a really bad experience with, with nukes and nuclear power. I mean, now, I mean, uh, this didn't happen that long ago, and I believe people, I mean, they're still hurting over it. They're still, I mean, they can't go to the area. People are still getting sick. I mean, it's devastating to them. And it's a well, small area with lots of people. It's going to be interesting what the long-term effects are also. Yeah. But again, I'm going to go back to just the psychological healing for this nation at this point. I mean, they're, they're just, they've just lost so much uh, since the tsunami and earthquake. Well, well they have, and, and, I, and I think- And, and, and any disaster. And, and, and this is a country that's living with what, what you're describing. And when you live with this type of a disaster, you really have to start thinking about where you wanna go. And what, what does your future look like? Psychologists are really good at helping people take a look at what's out there for you six months, or in this case, it's gonna be a lot more than six months, six years or 60 years. And they need to think about where they wanna go and how they wanna develop their, their country. And since they're living with this every day, that's the approach that they really need to take. You know, I, was, I had the honor of uh, hosting a Japanese delegation, and the thing that they said when they came to the United States, they're like, my goodness, there's so much space. I can't believe the space, because you know, they're on top of one, one another. I mean, it's just very crowded there. There are lots and lots of people in a small area on an island. So it's a, it's a different mentality. Oh, yeah. It's a different place than what we're used to experiencing. Well, thank you so much for your insights on this. Uh, don't go away, everybody. Uh, we've got a new lineup when we return. We're talking, taking you rather out to the ball field. It is, it is the dog days of summer here in the U.S., and that usually means teams are gearing up for the playoffs in baseball. But one player who was supposedly supposed to hit into the history books remains in the midst of a doping scandal.